All right. All right, it is Sunday night and it's time for Biker Church. And um, the way we start this program, everybody should have a red flag near them. At least I don't think you got one. There you go. There you go. You got one. Okay. And this is what we do. This red rag represents the blood of Jesus. And we raise it over our head and we wave it around and we say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, these are our prayer cloths. If you want to take one or several with you, please do. If you are watching and you need one, come by. We will load you up. Uh, this red cloth represents the blood of Jesus. And we use these as prayer cloths. When we pray for people, we give them, give it to them. Sometimes if they, they may not want the whole thing, so just cut a little piece. Just something that they can see that red and remember that somebody's praying for them. Amen. Amen. And we also keep little vials of oil. So if you need some... And, and it's just oil, ain't nothing magical about it. It's just, it's that oil that represents the Spirit of God. So if you need some oil or prayer cloths, please come get them. And saying that, we love to take prayer requests. You can, uh, got myself out of breath. <laughs> you can call us at 334-335-2410. That's the shop number. My cell phone is 334-546-8312. You can come by the shop, which we prefer because we want to hold your hand while we're praying for you. Uh, you can drop it at the shop. You can send it by um, Facebook through the shop, mine, or the, the ministry. But let us know what your prayer requests are so we can pray. And when you've got praise reports, we want to hear those too. Because now I remember Brother Steve used to say it's like saying sick them to a fast dog. Well, now, when you call and say, y'all have been praying for me about this and this is what happened, it makes me want to run and jump. <laughs> It just, it does, it's good to hear good things that are coming from our prayers. So if you need prayer, let us know. Um, we take donations of just about anything. Uh, if you've got furniture or clothing or food or any, anything that you've got, if you've got Bibles that you're not using and you want to donate them to us, I can write you a tax receipt for any of it. Uh, we keep Bibles up here. Um... So if you need one or some, come get them. I tell people all the time, if you want to get some and put them in your car. So if you come across somebody that needs a Bible, please come and get them. Um, you may have a Bible at your house that maybe the print's too small or it's not the version that you prefer or whatever. But if you're not using it, bring it up here and I promise you we will put it in the hands of somebody. There ought not to be a person in Crenshaw County that doesn't have a Bible, at least one. And most of us have got several. But if you're like me, you've got one or two that are your favorites. But there should not be a person. There's enough Bibles that there should not be a person in Crenshaw County that wants one that should not have a Bible. So if you've got them, bring them. If you want some, come and get them. Amen. And those donations, that goes for anything. Anything that you want, I, I'm not going to tell you now. I don't keep it up here. If it's furniture and I don't immediately know who needs it, I'm going to get it to one of the other organizations I know that can get it into the hands of somebody. Same way with clothing, same way with food. Um, and if you would like to make a money donation, I will take that too because it costs money to run this place. Um, yes, this is a coffee shop, and yes, we sell coffee and snacks, but that is not why we're open. We are up here to tell people about Jesus, and the coffee is the way we get them in. And um, so we would, if you want to invest in this ministry, we would love to have you be a partner with us. Just let me know. Um, we just mailed our newsletters out last week. If you would like to be added to the mailing list, all I need is your name and mailing address. Doesn't cost anything. We send it out once a month. It um, has our upcoming events. It ha usually has a recipe in it. Um, it will have, um, I may write a column or I may get somebody else to write a little column all, just all kind of little tidbits about the about the ministry and how what we're doing and what you if you want to join us what you can do. Um, saying that our two upcoming events November the I think it's the thirteenth. It's not it's, it's this coming Saturday. We're having movie night here at the shop. And now that the time has changed, we will start that at six. We pick a a good family friendly kids movie and the adults watch the movie and the kids play. We have a good <laughs> we have a good time. We have watched Cars. We have watched uh, The Love Bug, Mary Poppins, and a couple of others. It is always a lot of fun. And I'm telling you, the kids lay down here on the floor and roll 
and hold their hands up in front of the, you know, they're not watching the movie, but us adults are watching and we're enjoying it. So it's a lot of fun. And then um, the last Saturday night of the month, this month, we're having gay night. And that's going to be the Saturday night after Thanksgiving. And we may not have a big turnout, but we're going to be here. And we play dominoes and checkers and just about, there's a rack full of games right over there. And I just had somebody give me some more. We have more games than I know what to do with. So please come play with us. We have a lot of fun. We get here about six. <clears throat> we ask everybody to bring their favorite snack or if they want to bring pizza or sub sandwiches or whatever. Everybody brings something to eat and something to drink. And we all share and eat and play games and eat and talk and do some other stuff and eat. And we can be here till as long as, as long as we're here. We have a good time. Uh, we do Bible study on Tuesday nights and Saturday nights at 6 p.m. And we, Randy and I chose those nights because we're not trying to take people away from their church. We want to offer somebody an extra opportunity for Bible study. Maybe they work on Wednesday night and they can't go to their church. They can come here. Um, we don't have members up here. Randy and I were the only members because I don't want any preacher to think I'm trying to take their members. We're not. Your family when you're up here. But you know, you need to go to your church and support your church, and then you come here when you want to. Um, now, if you consider this your church, that's fine, but I don't, I don't want any preacher to think that I'm trying to, we're trying to take their, their members, because that's not what we're about. We're trying to give a little bit of extra. We also do a ladies' Bible study on a Joyce Myers book. I think we've got about three chapters left. We do that Monday nights at 6, and the same chapter Wednesday morning at 10 here at the shop. If you're interested in that, come on. You don't have to buy the book. We just go over one chapter a week, and it is very good. It's Habits of a Godly Woman, and it is a very good study. And then, of course, on Sunday nights, we have bike church up here at 6 o'clock. We do live, and then I take the video, and I leave it on Facebook, but I also load it up on YouTube, and that way people get a chance to watch it again. Um, <clears throat> I, we had a great time at the hot dog cooking and giveaway last Saturday night. We gave away, it was over 350 hot dogs, and we had a ball. The kids had a ball. I got to meet some real live dinosaurs and <laughs> have my picture made with them. Uh, we had all kinds, of, all kinds of fun. It was just a lot of fun. Had a lot of people coming to help us, and it was a ball. And any time you want to come help us with something, you get in touch with me, and I promise you I will find something for you to do. Now, our next big event is the possum drop on New Year's Eve, and that, again, will start at 6 o'clock. It'll be like a game night. We ask everybody to bring their favorite snacks, foods, cakes, desserts, whatever you want to bring, and we will eat and play games and just have all kind of fun. And then at midnight, our possum will jump from the top of a 20-foot tall pole. And if you've never seen children at a something like that, it's, it's worth coming just to see that because those kids stand out there and count and do the countdown. And I know everybody that's awake in Luverne can hear them screaming because they're at the top of their lungs. We have a ball. We have a ball. And um, it's just a lot of fun. So we're planning on doing that. Now, with saying all that, I have a very special guest tonight. Y'all probably have already seen him. Brother Steve Defee and his beautiful wife, Sister Lisa and Bob are here. And they're going to play and sing. And then Brother Steve's going to preach to us. So I'm going to turn it over to them now. And y'all just pay attention. That's all I'm going to say. All right. Come on up, Rusty. <laughs> oh. Huh? The little... Red I think so. <coughs> there we go. There we go. It, it may do an auto shut off, Lisa. I don't know. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good. Amen. Amen. Oh, we we, me and you one, I'm going to have to look out of one eye and you with the other You one. want mine? Okay. Uh, she, she doesn't take her glasses with her anywhere. She always uses mine, and I let her because she can see things my way then. Uh, so. Uh, <laughs> now, I, I didn't have it said anyway. You fix it like you want it. You fix it like you want it. Ma'am?
I'm free tonight. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God sets us free. I was thinking about, as Sister Beth was saying, you know, uh, about this being biker church tonight. And I've had the privilege through the years of, of not only owning a bike, but riding with Sister Beth and Brother Randy, and had the privilege of even going up into Seneca, South Carolina on a, a long trip, mm -hmm. if you will, and we rode in many places that we went and saw the hand of God work. So I know a little bit about a motorcycle, and I was always admiring Brother Randy and as he would leave in the wee hours of the morning, and it would be freezing cold, and I'd say, I love to ride a motorcycle, but I don't believe I like it quite that bad. <laughs> uh, but he would be going to work. He was dedicated to it. And uh, I thank God for Sister Beth and for the coffee house and here and, and, and this shop being a part of this community. Uh, and not only just for this community, but reaching out to you that are watching even. To know that there's a place, and I commend her, Sister Beth, for continuing to allow the Spirit of God to move in the ministry. And I thank you all that are here tonight that are sitting among us too. Uh, as you continue to serve God, because we are free. Jesus has paid the price that we can have the freedom that we now have, and we can enjoy the life that we have right. as we serve Him. And thank God, because of His amazing grace, uh, he has helped us and blessed us and uh, we wouldn't be here tonight were it not for amazing grace Amen. that's what I had this is a new version of the song amazing grace I've got what some folks might call a wholeness group some of you may not know what that is but if you preach this morning you kind of I, I can preach hard on Sunday morning and I pay for it on Sunday night my voice kind of gets Getting in that baser hit type on Sunday night, but we're going to try this song for you here too. Amazing grace. <laughs> Yes. 
picture here for just a moment and put this up. Bob, thank you also for helping us tonight. Bob is a valuable, valuable person, minister, and one of the best harmonica players I've ever laid ears on. And I mean, that's the best water in Luverne, Alabama right there. Right. Uh, thank God Beth, thank you for the opportunity to come tonight and to share and to be a part of such a wonderful uh, ministry. Such a, a dynamic ministry that is so valuable uh, to the kingdom of God and to this community. And... I want to say that tonight I'm just kind of wanting to continue a little bit of a message that maybe is part two uh, that God shared with me and we shared this morning at Cornerstone Christian Fellowship and I would like to say along with Sister Beth and there's many, many opportunities for you who are out there that are watching. I praise God for you and it's our prayer that God bless you that uh, when you're coming through Luverne, stop by. Uh, just stick your head in the door. I do on occasion myself as I work for the city and walk through and open the door and stick your head in the door and just say hi or whatever and move on. And at least, you know, that's another good way of letting Sister Beth know that uh, their efforts are not in vain, that God is honoring their ministry and God is honoring what uh, she is endeavoring to continue to move forward with the vision that she and Brother Randy uh, have been blessed with. And, uh, I, 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 you know, I don't want to just get too deep on this tonight, but I'm sure that Brother Randy is looking down right now with a great big smile and saying hallelujah. Praise God. Let's move on uh, and let's go forward. So I praise God for what he's doing. You know, I've, I've always thought about in uh, downtown Luverne, uh, is there room for a ministry such as this right here? And a thousand times, yes. A thousand times over, yes. And more so now than we've ever seen before. Uh, you just heard tonight, if you haven't tuned in already, uh, how that there are so many things that are happening all through the week. Uh, and, you know, again, you may not be able to attend them all. And, and everybody I know has got busy schedules, but... There is enough stuff going on that anywhere at any point in time, somebody can hear about the gospel, Beth, and that is vital uh, in this day and this hour that we're in. And I was thinking this past week and even this weekend and yesterday, it really began to just weigh upon me about what God wants from you and I, what God expects of each and every one of us. And 
Uh, I shared this again this morning and every time I do, and, and this is because of Sister Beth that I go to, you know, to Jeremiah uh, chapter number 29, verse 11, when God says that I know the thoughts that I think towards you. And that's thoughts to bless you and for no evil to come against you and for thoughts that to give you an expected end. And that was my message this morning of the, the expecting outcome uh, that God has for us. And sometimes we can't see the forest for the trees, if you understand what I'm saying. So many times, and we want to settle for so much less than what God is really wanting to hold outcome to be when it's all said and done and we have a tendency sometimes to bog down uh at the very beginning or maybe we've we've uh walked through halfway through our journey or something and then we get stumbled up and we bog down there but god's got an expected end and i want to share this with you that are watching tonight you bikers that are tuned in tonight god bless your heart God's got an expected end, and I can go ahead and share with you tonight, God is looking for good things to come to you. God is expecting good things to come out from you. Now, I have to be candid tonight and say when I first got into the biker mentality back in the day, when uh, I would take, and I'm not trying to make fun of nobody, but I would try to make that rag, you know, and tie it around my head and uh, it didn't help me not one bit, didn't help my looks or nothing, so I took the thing back off, but I began to see people and began to meet people and began to see that there are some good people in this world, and there are some good people who ride motorcycles, some of the best people in the world you will ever meet, or people that you wouldn't think were worth 15 cents if you was to pay for it, but yet God has people all over the world that he can use. And there are people tonight that I can't touch. There's people tonight that you might not be able to touch. But there is somebody that we can touch. And God is calling us all to do that for everything. To reach out. And so if I can tonight for just a little bit, Sister Dad. I, I want to continue with chapter number two maybe of this morning's message. And I want to share a little something else with you tonight. About... God's standard of time by which he wants to do stuff in our life. This morning we went to Genesis and also we were talking about Joseph and Joseph's coat of many colors and the things that Joseph had to deal with throughout his life and how he was uh, chastised by his brothers and he was put in a ditch and then sold into slavery. And then when he got hooked up, if you will, at Potiphar's kingdom and then Potiphar's wife trying to seduce him and him trying to get away from that. And he was trying to outrun his life. And it just seems like everything was just closing in on him. But God's got a time frame for everybody for what he wants to see done. But during that time frame, he doesn't always tell us that it's going to be a bed of roses. Can I get an amen, amen. from anybody tonight? It's, it's, it's always been that way. But it doesn't change the plan that God has for us, nor does it change the outcome that he's wanting us to achieve or to get through. So tonight, uh, I want to go to the book of Habakkuk, chapter number two. This is a very small book. It's about the middle of your Bible. If you're, turn, if you're turning there, if you're not, uh, you can turn to it when you get the opportunity. Uh, chapter number 2 and verse number 3. The book of Habakkuk, if you'll open your Bible up back to the middle of the book and then start moving over toward the New Testament a few pages, you'll find, you'll run across Habakkuk. But don't grab three or four pages because you might miss it. It's a very small, and if your Bible is just like mine, it's on page 863. <laughs> Otherwise, you're just going to have to find it. I've often told people, uh, uh, Sister Rogers, if, if you can't find it, just go to the front of the book. They put those page numbers in there, and that's what they want it for. Nothing wrong with you going to do that. You know, as a preacher, I have to sometimes go to the front of the book and say, I know that book's in there. It's a little bitty thing, but I got to find exactly what page it's on. That's fine, well, and good. It doesn't make you any less of a Christian if you're not able to just open it up right there to it. But Habakkuk chapter number two, verse number three goes like this. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. 
because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Let me read that again. I don't know what that done for you, but it just spoke to my heart when I read that. I said, God, you're trying to show us something here. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. How many of us have a vision tonight? We've all got visions. We've all had dreams. We've all had desires. We've all had goals. So that vision, we may not see it at this very moment, but a vision is something that's transpiring. A vision is something that's happening over a course of time. It might not all happen at one time. It may be a process that takes us through many weeks, through many months, many years. But yet that vision is happening. If I can go back to Joseph in Genesis this, uh, uh, from this morning, Joseph's ministry was over a process of time. It wasn't a week or so that this stuff happened to him. But in the end, his whole family and all the nations round about had to bow down at his foot. God had a plan for him. God still got a vision for you and I tonight. And that vision is something that he wants to see come to pass in our life. So I'm encouraging you that are watching tonight, don't give up on your vision. Don't give up on your goals. Don't give up on your plans. God is still on the throne room of grace and he's making intercession for each and every one of us. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak. Now what is he saying? That vision is going to happen. When it's all said and done, it will come to be. It will come to pass. It will be as God has said it was going to be and as God has blessed you. And, that, and it will not lie. Though it tarry, he's even telling us, though it may, you know, it may be a little while before it transpires, <coughs> wait for it. Now, wait is probably not one of Christian people's most notorious assets that we have. We want God's blessings and we want them yesterday. You know, we want God to move and we want him to move now. But God is saying there's times in our lives when he wants us just to tarry. Right. Just to wait for it, that it's coming. And that's the thing that I want to drive home to us tonight is that it is on its way. Mm -hmm. It may not happen today. It may not happen again this coming week. But it will happen if you hang in there and you hold on. God will bring it to fruition in your life. Why can we trust God tonight for his perfect timing? And every time God moves, Brother Jim, it may be 30 years from when you had that vision, Amen. but God shows up right on time. Amen. And it was always, never a day late. That's right. You know, Daniel, I think about Daniel was accustomed to praying to God and hearing God hearing his prayer and God answering that prayer just like that. And then all of a sudden, one day, Daniel prays, and for 21 days, no answer has come. We know the story, but there were those who might think, well, why did God not answer his prayer that day? And when all was said and done, God did answer the prayer, but he answered it with an exclamation of why it didn't happen the first day. He said it was dispatched, but an angel of darkness stood in the way. But you did get the answer. It might have took 21 days. And that's my point tonight. I want to share. It, is it odd if I just knock this furniture over around in here tonight? I'm excited because it might take 21 days. But if God dispatched angels to minister to us, hallelujah, he's going to see that the end result is going to be what he wanted it to be. Amen. So your vision is vibrant. Your vision is alive. Your vision is powerful. And if God gives it to you, don't ever take no for an answer for anybody. Amen. God said it. I believe it. And that's the way it's going to be. That's what he said in Habakkuk. We don't spend a lot of time in the book of Habakkuk. But God sent me to this and said, look, here is a vision that is yet for an appointed time. God has got a day, an hour, a moment, and a minute when he's going to pour out his Holy Ghost anointing. And he's going to bless somebody. And he's going to bring it to pass in your life. If you can but hold on, friend. God is in your court. Hallelujah. Come on. Uh, my Lord, this, Lou Vernon needs to hear this. God created a time. And God rules over that time. You're not going to make it happen before God gets ready for it to happen. 
You're not going to make it last any longer than God wants it to last. It is God's appointed time. So let that just begin to seek into your spirit. God operates on an internal calendar. Excuse me, not internal, but eternal calendar. His calendar is not like ours. His calendar doesn't carry 31 days. His calendar carries a beginning with no end. That's right. It never ceases. God doesn't have an end date. De December the 31st doesn't make a dime's worth of difference to God. He's already got an appointed time. There's a time for everything, Ecclesiastes tells us also. But God knows exactly what He's doing. So the vision tonight for a coffee house, the vision tonight for Cornerstone Christian Fellowship. The vision tonight for Laverne, Alabama. The vision for Biker Church tonight. For you, my friend, is that God wants to bless you, to prosper you, and to give us an expected end. Not that we're expecting, but that He is expecting. God is expecting good things to come. God never delays never destroys, or excuse me, delays never destroys God's plan for our lives. Now, what I mean by that is there were those who tonight, if I can reflect back, and I hate that you didn't get the full message this morning, maybe you can look it up on Bob Perdue's Facebook page and you can get it, or Cornerstone Christian Fellowship's page and you can pick up this morning's message. Um, but there are those that will tell you that after a little while when they didn't see it happen in your life, well, God's not really going to move. Maybe you miss God and maybe God didn't really tell you anything. That's the critic that would try to discourage, to tear you down, to tell you there's never going to be a blessing to come your way. You're just wasting your time. You're wasting your efforts and you're wasting everybody else's time, effort, and energy. But listen to me. If God gives you a vision, you were there when God gave you the vision and don't allow anybody, even though time is delayed, even though it don't happen today, doesn't mean it won't happen to more. They've been telling me, Brother Jim, for over 2,000 years that Jesus is coming back. And where is he at? I'm telling you, he's closer now than he was yesterday because I'm a day closer today Amen. than I was yesterday. Amen? It doesn't matter the delay. All that matters is that we are ready to go. Yes. All that matters is that the blood of Jesus is applied to our life. Our sins are on the blood. Our vision. Our vision. It's not the 2020. It's God's vision. We've got a vision that God has blessed us with for the future of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're not setting up earthly tabernacles here on this earth because it's nothing that's going to be left here that's not going to crumble. But God is wanting people to be a, a kingdom-minded people. We're building a nation, if you will, of people of God. People who love Jesus Christ. We're not just building buildings and holding town meetings and, 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 and places. These are places that we just come together for the purpose of sharing the kingdom of God. So don't let a delay destroy the plan of God in your life. Don't let people destroy the plan of God in your life. Just because you ride a motorcycle doesn't mean you don't love God. Amen? Just because you ride up and down the road and you got a flag waving on the back of your motorcycle doesn't mean you can't tell somebody about Jesus Christ. Listen to me tonight, friends. We are all in this together. We've all got a part to play. And God has given every one of us the vision to carry the kingdom of God further. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place. And if I go, I'm going to come back. To receive you. Who was he talking to? Not just his disciples, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and all the rest of them there. He was talking about the church Amen. of the living God. I will come back and receive you that where I am, Jesus is speaking, there you may be also. Amen. So we've still got a vision tonight of the rapture of the church that is yet to come. 
Well, it's delayed. Well, so what? If it's delayed, I'm going to keep trying to win another lost person. If it's delayed tomorrow, I'm going to shine the light for Jesus one more day. I've still got work to do. You still got work to do. You still got motorcycles to ride on a motorcycle ministry or a street ministry or in a church service somewhere. Now, that makes no difference. Let the blood of Jesus, whether you go into a jail somewhere to telling somebody about the blood of Jesus and sharing a Bible, whether you're a Gideon, it doesn't matter as long as the gospel of Jesus Christ is being pursued That's and right. given out. Amen. The Bible says in Isaiah 55, 11, that his word would not return void. But it shall accomplish that that he sent it to do. So praise God tonight for the vision. Do you have a vision? Now, let me change thoughts for just a moment tonight. In chapter number 2, verse number 3, that this vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come and it will not tarry. So, while you're waiting, when you're waiting, in the process of waiting, don't get ahead of God. Don't outrun God. Move in God's timing. Well, when does God move? You'll know when He moves. Amen. When does God stop? You'll know when He stops. He led the children of Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. When the pillar moved, they moved. When the pillar stopped, they stopped. Simple as that. A child of God will know what God is wanting them to do. How am I going to know that? He's going to share it with you somehow, some way. God speaks to you through preachers. He speaks to you through family members. He speaks to you more than anything in the world through His Word. Pick up the Word of God. Read it. And God can and will reveal to you exactly what He wants to do. Wait on the Lord, Psalms 27, 14 says. Be strong and take heart and wait on God. Amen. Wait on Him. Don't say, God, I'm just going to go do this on my own. Listen, a lot of people have tried that and they have messed up. A lot of people have struck out on their own and about halfway down the road they figured out that it was a dead end street and there was no place to turn around. And they're pulling a trailer. How about them apples? Yeah, you know, there's a lot of people have found themselves in those scenarios. But when God says do something, you know that you know that you know that He has called you to do it. Now, let me just share real briefly tonight some of my personal experiences. Maybe one of those. Someone asks you, well, how do you know when God is wanting you to move in a direction? I can speak for Brother Steve because this is the way God works in my life. I try to push it off. That it was nobody but Steve's idea. And I try to say, Lord, you know, if this is Steve, let it be to naught. Don't let it even start. And I try to live that and I try to walk away from it. But then I can't sleep. Then I can't eat because of it. Then everything I do, every time I open the Word, every time I open my mind up to begin to try to meditate upon the Lord, all I have is the vision that He says He wants done. Where I'm at now at Cornerstone Christian Fellowship is a good example of that, of just the latest. I tried my best to stay away from that. Didn't want to do that. Didn't think I was capable of doing such a thing. And I just could not rest. I could not eat like I wanted to. I just, I couldn't for the most part, couldn't get any satisfaction. So I'm saying that in my own personal life. But when I said, God, I'm going to try it and I'm going to do it and I'm going to succeed because I believe this is a, the very thing that you want to see done. So if I stumble, Sister Beth, it's not going to be because of Steve. It's going to be because I did what God said do. And this is the way I ended up with a lot of things in my life. Lord, if I fall, Sister Lord, uh, 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 if I fall, I'm going to fall trying to do something. Amen? Right. Instead Amen. of not doing anything. And a lot of people, when they try to get ahead of God, though, they think that God's just going to bless them because they decided they had a good idea that they want to run out. The Bible says to test me. God said, try me. 
Just we, we need to test God. God's not going to kick us to the curb. Ask God saying, Lord, are you sure this is what you want me to do? And God's probably going to say, well, that's what I told you to do. That's what I want you to do. So sometimes Steve's hard-headed and my wife can say amen. <laughs> but I want to know that it's God and not Steve because Steve gets no glory from it. God gets all glory. So there's another good scenario. Can God get all the credit? Will God get all the credit for it? And God begins to move in your life. So God's got an expected plan for you in your life. It's not always a bit of roses. There's been some good days. There's been some bad days. <laughs> so don't outrun God. Number two is look for God's purpose and the delay because He hadn't showed up yet. Look for His purpose. Wait and hope of the Lord. He is our help and our shield. That's found in Psalms chapter number 33 verse 20. Wait and hope for the Lord. Wait. Wait. Well, I'm tired of waiting. We'll wait some more. Don't become weary in well-doing. Allow God to move in our lives. When we find ourselves waiting on God to give us that vision and that expected end, it's in that waiting period that we're growing. It's in that waiting period that we're listening to the voice of God because we don't know what the outcome is going to be, and He does. There's a story that I'll share again tonight that I shared this morning. God's got a better plan for you. The story is of an evangelist that went out uh, everywhere preaching the gospel, and unfortunately his wife passed away, and they had two small boys that was left, and when the dad would leave to go to preach, he would come home and he would bring gifts to the little boys, uh, to the sitter's house for the little boys. And on this particular occasion, he came home and he didn't bring any gifts back for the little boys. And so the little boys said, Dad, where's our gifts? And he said, just come and go with me. We're going to go down to the store. And when we go into this store, whatever you see in there that you want, we're going to get it. And so sure enough, he opens the door and they run in and the first thing that they see is a big candy machine. And those little boys ran up to that machine and said, this is what we want, this big candy machine. And dad said, that's good, but let's look around a little bit. Let's see if there's anything else in the store. And they begin to look around and they got over in the sporting goods section. Lo and behold, here's a basketball. And they see the basketball and they run and get it and they start dribbling. And boy, they're having a time. This is what we want, a basketball. Dad said, that's nice, but just, just keep looking. Just, just keep looking around. And then all of a sudden they move around the corner and they look on the back wall and there's two 10-speed bicycles propped up against the back wall. And those little boys fasten their eyes on dad and they're just as big as saucers and the dad says, would you like to have those bicycles? And oh, yes, dad, we would love to have those bicycles. So dad buys those 10-speed bicycles and takes them home with them and they live happily ever after. My point is this, they could have settled for a candy machine, but they went out with a 10-speed bicycle as a little boy. God's got greater blessings in store for us if we can just learn that in the delay to keep moving forward, to keep searching, to keep pressing on. I don't know what this has done for you tonight or even today, but God has opened my eyes to some things. He's opened my heart to just to see and to understand a few more things that God is in His delay is preparing us for the final outcome. So his delays is preparing us. Not that he needed to delay to get it ready. Not that he needed to delay to go find a store to get a 10-speed bicycle for you. God can speak a world into existence so he can move right now. But he's got us in that place to where he's fashioning us and he's forming us and he's allowing us to go through periods of time in our life building us to that place. And even as Joseph did, he was committed to serving God no matter what. 
you and I tonight have got to continue to be committed to serving God, no matter what we're dealing with. Now, I'll be honest with you, there are days it's tough. There's days that it's hard. There's days that there's pressure just seem like beyond measure. But we have to remain focused and we have to remain committed to serving God for anything uh, to come out in the end the way God wants it to be. But sadly tonight, there's been a lot of people who have just fallen by the wayside, give up in the heat of the battle, and said there's no use. I've been waiting and I've been waiting and I've been waiting and I've been waiting and God hasn't moved. And they quit right before their blessing mm -hmm. comes around the corner. Mm -hmm. They're almost to the top of the hill that they can see over and they stumble and fall all the way back to the bottom. Expect God to come through. Do we really expect, do we really believe God is going to bring it to pass? Yes, sir. Amen. And that's the life that we got to live. We believe it. And it kind of sums up this tonight. God said it. I believe it. And that is final. Yes. God said it. I believe it. That's the way it will be. God said it. I believe it. And it will come true. Amen. God is not a liar. He's not a God that he can lie. He is truth. He knows truth. He is truth. You and I understand truth. We speak truth. So when God says that the vision, and in Jeremiah again, the thoughts that I think towards you, to give you an expected end, will come to pass. Amen. It will happen. When and where, that's up to God. Makes no difference. But I can say this, that God sprinkles some blessings all along the way. There's not all work and no fun. There's not all labor and no reward because God rewards all along the way. That's right. There's blessing on top of blessing. Blessing on top of blessing. Right. And then blessings on top of blessings. Amen. Whenever we think we're fighting a battle, God is just preparing us for the next blessing that is just around the corner. That's right. In closing, Expect God. Expect it to come through. But those who wait upon the Lord, those who expect, those who look for, it, and those who hope in Him shall change and be renewed and renew their strength and their power. And they shall lift up their wings and mount up as eagles. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Hmm. And they shall lift up their wings as eagles. God's challenging us tonight, guys. You that are sitting at home, biker church, you may never have been on a motorcycle in your life, and it makes no difference. You missed out on a lot, you missed some fun days, some fun times. But it doesn't matter to God. What matters to God is who is living in our heart. It doesn't matter the color of our skin. It doesn't matter what affiliation we might belong to in a church. It doesn't matter where we work. It doesn't matter what side of the tracks we live on. What matters is, is God Lord of our lives. I challenge not only you that are watching, but us that are here tonight. Amen. Let's be what God wants us to be. Let's do our best. We're not without fault or failure. We're not without having bad days either. But we know that we know that we know that the God that we serve will come through. If we persevere, and as we do as Paul pressed toward the prize for the mark of that high call, he will bring it to pass in our lives. I don't know about you, but I've seen God do a lot of blessings. Not only to myself and my family, but I've seen it in your lives. I've seen God do a lot of things to a lot of people. Yes, I've seen tragedy come. I've seen hardships come. But I've also seen blessings. So all Amen. along the way, God sprinkles some glory in that. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I am so blessed tonight and so honored 
that I can have a privilege to stand before this congregation of people that is here tonight in this little coffee house. Those that are watching by way of uh, Facebook, uh, media, whatever the case may be that they're watching, maybe a YouTube video. Lord, tonight, you can go through the radio waves, the airwaves, the TV waves, the video waves, whatever it is. And God, your anointing now can touch a life. Your anointing can touch a heart. And you can take that person, Lord, who has just been on the verge of giving up. Lord, in thinking it's no use trying any further, throwing in the towel, I'll never try again. There's no time to quit now. Their blessings are right around the curve. Their blessing is just right now upon them, God. I pray that somehow, some way, that my old raspy voice tonight, Lord, the words that I've shared tonight, will go somehow to somebody's heart and encourage them. Lord, and minister to them and, 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 and entice them to continue to move forward. Not to quit, not to give up, to press on. Don't fall by the wayside, but to hang in there. God, I speak blessing over them. If there's one tonight under the sound of the voice, Lord, that maybe doesn't know you as Savior at all, God, tonight, all they have to do is say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Come into my heart, come into my life, and change me, Lord. Let me be a vessel of honor. Let me be someone that can carry your word. Let me have the zeal. Lord, that you want for me. And let the vision that you have for your people, Lord, manifest itself in my life also. God, that I can represent the kingdom of God. Not only can I ride a bike, not only can I ride a horse, not only can I walk down the street, but God, I can carry the banner of Jesus Christ. I can carry the love of God and I can share it with whoever I meet along the highways and the byways. So God, cleanse me from the inside out and make me more like you and less like me with every passing day. Come into my heart in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. God is good to us. Above and beyond anything that we can comprehend, think, shape, form, or fashion. His visions and His ways are not our ways and ours are certainly not His. So I would rather put my agenda on hold and have God's agenda Amen. because I know we're going to come out a winner when we do it God's way. Amen. Amen. I love you. God bless you. Sister Beth, thank you tonight for thank the privilege you. of coming to Biker Church. Thank Look you. forward to coming back and seeing you folks again at another day. God bless. Thank you so much. Thank you.